Hi everyone, how are we doing? We will kick off in a couple of minutes, uh, just two minutes or so, let a few more people join. I'm sure people finish up work for the day, meetings, etc. Good, how are we doing? Any any sort of names, faces recognized? Uh, feel free to just post uh, a quick hello, maybe your, your name, where you're from, and always interesting to know what your role is as well. So if you wanna start posting um, on the right-hand side, that'd be great. Excellent. As I said, we'll wait for a couple of minutes to kick off properly. Just let a few more people join before we get started. Um, great. Yeah, if you just post your, your name, uh, where you're based and your role on the chat, always interesting to see who, who's joining these live sessions. Excellent. Perfect. So if you recognize some names. Awesome. Do, do, do. Good. If you've just joined, as I said, we're going to wait just a minute or so to kick off. Let a few more people join today's uh, session. I think we'll have quite a few watching the replay. It might be middle of your day, depending on where you're based. Hopefully after work for many of you. <clears throat> Excellent. Great. Let's kick off in just one minute. Just one minute to go. Right, perfect. Kick off in about one minute. Excellent. Right, I'm just going to test screen share. If somebody just post on the chat for me, you can definitely see my screen so that we are all on the same page. Just give me a quick, uh, quick thumbs up or a quick comment on the chat. That'd be great. And then we will get started. Excellent. Okay, great. I think I can see that this is working in fact. So let's jump into it. Excellent. Okay, let's get started for today's session. So what are we going to cover today? We're going to talk about something called the lightning product audit. Now, this is going to be a really hands-on session. So in terms of how it's going to be structured, it's going to be maximum five minutes, a little bit of an introduction to, to what this is, why, why it's important, how we actually use it. We're then going to apply this with a real case study. So uh, I'm going to ask you to be interacting, you know, posting your, your thoughts, answers on the chat. Really encourage you to participate. There's no um, you know, right or wrong answer with what we're going to cover. Great to just get you thinking. And I'm going to give you some feedback as well. So that help you improve as a, as a product manager, product leader. And then we're also going to apply this to the product that you currently manage. So it's going to be really hands on, you know, really trying to learn by, by doing, which is very much our philosophy uh, at Prod MBA, right? the only effective way of learning. So, so do um, get ready to, to participate. And on that, I'm gonna be sharing a Miro link that I will be screen sharing. You'll see that, but I will post that on the chat so you can uh, follow along as well. Good, let's jump in. So what are we gonna to cover today? Um, as I said, we're gonna cover a framework called the Lightning product audit. Now, this is a framework for really uncovering the two key risks that face any product and not just understanding, okay, well, what are those risks, but, but actually helping us um, understand what specifically to focus on to address those, those two risks. And we'll talk about those very shortly. Now, this could be applicable, right? This product audit could be applicable for the product you're currently managing. You could roll this out tomorrow evaluate see what the key risks are take some really concrete action there could be you know for also evaluating a product idea that one of your friends come to you with for example uh also another good context if you're interviewing for example really really nice way to demonstrate that you understand the key risks involved with a product you know what specifically to focus on what's really important to focus on so i'm just going to start screen sharing before we talk about why this is so important for you as product people. Good, hopefully you can see my screen. Good, we'll, we'll jump into Miro shortly, but just a, a you know, really important. Why bother being here? You're gonna be here for, let's say 45 minutes to an hour. 
it's Tuesday evening. I'm sure you've got other things you would prefer to do, such as uh, switch off from anything work related. So why is this so important? Why bother participating today? What is in it for you as a product person? You know, ultimately, it comes down to results, product results. That means building products that matter, building products that, that are built with the right foundation so that they're actually able to have impact in practice. Why are we using this framework? Because most product managers focus on all the wrong stuff. They spend so much time worrying about prioritization of features, for example, when the foundations aren't built correctly. What are those foundations? What primarily matters? What well, comes up to two key, key risks? So the first is, you know, are we actually addressing the right problem? And secondly, are we able to come up with some sort of differentiated product? And these are things we might not have at the start, but these are, these are two risks that we want to address and ultimately drive, drive towards, right, and attempt to solve. And let's just look at some stats here. And I've actually added the references below. These are great for you to just save somewhere, right? whip out whenever you're in, in, in a discussion with your stakeholders. So first statistic, always surprising for people, 90% of startups fail. Now, startups are essentially product-led businesses. So we don't have an exact study on products, product failure, but from the literature, we're saying about 80 to 90% of products broadly fail. So don't underestimate how risky product work is, right? We have a very small chance of succeeding from the start. Now, of those 90% that fail, 35% fail because of a lack of market need, right? This comes from a study where we looked at about 150 startups, understood what, what, what was the cause of failure. So lack of market need, i.e. they arrive as either something a non-problem, right? When just people don't really care about, or maybe it was just the, the, the wrong problem. It wasn't that a cue? We were looking at the wrong audience, right? The market just didn't really connect with, with um, um, what, we, what we thought we should offer. And finally, if we look at this top six out of nine reasons for startup failure, these are all linked to lack of differentiation. I, we weren't offering something that was uniquely valuable for the, the market. And as I said, I've got these studies linked below. Do go and read those after, go, go through the literature there. But don't worry about that now, just save that for later. You're gonna have access to this board indefinitely. So therefore, as a product person, product leader, product manager, it makes a huge amount of sense to focus on these two huge uh, uh, factors involved with success or failure. Right? One, are we choosing the right problem to solve? Or can we readjust to the right problem? And secondly, are we able to solve it in a genuinely unique, genuinely valuable um, way? Right? Remember, your job as a product manager, as a product leader, is ultimately in managing risk. Right? Managing risk and those two big risks are related to the problem and it's related to differentiation. And finally, finally just to illustrate that point, you know, imagine a scenario where you've, you've, I don't know, you're, you're launching a new product, you're working on an existing product. Now, you could have a the foundations for a successful product without for example understanding how you might make money from it right not having a revenue strategy in place um you could have something that's really you know differentiated product that people like using that they get value from you'll you'll work out how to generate revenue at some point yeah some very rare cases maybe not but, but almost always you'll be able to work out experiment with different ways for generating revenue on the flip side if you do not have a differentiated offer that's solving an acute problem, right? one that people are really, you know, really, really uh, uh, motivated to solve, then it's really hard to make money, right? You could have the best revenue strategy in theory. Are you able to actually charge people money? Are they going to hand over their hard earned cash to you? Probably not, right? So the foundations are not there. Um, and linked to that, you know, this might remind you when we talk about an audit, uh, you may have heard of things like the Lean Canvas, for example, great way for mapping out key, key aspects of product. But what I want to do today is just really zoom in with the Lightning Product audit, audit on the two things that really, really, really matter. You know, again, the two things we cannot do without. Um, tools like Lean Canvas are great, but I'm sure many of you have heard about it. How many of you have actually gone and applied it? Now, that's a different question, right? And, and we're in the business of actually taking theory and, and putting it into practice and making sure that we can really deliver impact. 
So finally, just to, again, a recap for those that maybe joined a few minutes late. What are we going to do today? We're going to go through this Lightning product audit framework. Uh, we're going to look at a real example as a group. And then I'm going to ask you to actually go and apply, um, apply this yourselves. There are sections on the board for you to go and apply this to any product you, you might be working on currently. And then we're going to wrap up today with a Q&A. So hopefully you have some questions where we can really delve into putting this into to practice ultimately. As I always say, if you've joined these sessions before, theory is a complete waste of time. You know, go watch your Netflix, enjoy dinner, have the night off if you're not going to bother putting this into practice. Right. Theory without practice is, is, is a waste of everybody's time. So let's uh, let's jump in and start putting this stuff into um, practice. Excellent. So what do we have? We have two parts to this product, um, Lightning product audit. The first we're going to delve into that, that first key risk, right? What is the problem we're solving? What's the nature of that problem? And secondly, looking at differentiation, right? Is our product actually differentiated? Is it, is it genuinely unique and is it actually valuable in practice? So let's start with the problem. And we're going to go through an example, as I said, and then we're going to go get you to go and apply this for your own product. So as I ask these questions, I'd love for you to just write on the comments any your, your answer to this. So let's imagine that we are, you know, we're coming in as a consultant or we're coming in as a you know, senior product person at, at Miro, right? Easy example, because it's a tool that we're using right now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So first question, what, what, what is the problem that, that, that this product solves, right? What problem does Miro solve? Everybody's write write a comment on the chat or write your answer. Sorry, on the the, the webinar chat. Uh, what problem does Miro solve? Just give you a minute to write an answer here. If you've joined late, I will repost the link to the Miro board. What problem? does Miro as a product solve? Just feel free to write on the webinar chat. Don't worry about using Miro yet. I'll just be screen sharing for this first section. Any ideas? Who've we got? Andrea, Anthony, let's see. Freddy, Kelly Matteo, any other ideas? problem does it solve? So Anthony's written remote brainstorming slash whiteboarding. Okay. Anthony, why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? Remote brainstorming. What, what problem is that solving? Let's be crystal clear about the problem we're solving. Everyone's working from home. Yeah. Why is that a problem? What problems may that cause? Any ideas? Why might why might people want to remote brainstorm? Why might everyone working from home be a problem that, that Miro could help to solve? Any ideas? If not, I will write an answer. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Collaboration to ultimately do, do better work. And yeah, working in silos doesn't facilitate innovation, right? It's about collaboration so that we can deliver better results. We can, we can, we can be more effective. Yeah, great answer, Freddie. Awesome. Good. So be really careful here. You know, this is not about uh, how we understand problems today. We, we spent two weeks doing that with Pro MBA, but you know, what, what's on the surface, the sort of surface level problem usually is the, the error companies. We, we don't actually understand what are we really trying to solve here? It's not about helping people whiteboard. It's about helping them collaborate more effectively. When we understand what the problem truly is, we, we just open up to many different ways that we could solve that. So really, really important as an anchor to understand the problem. Sounds really obvious, right? Everyone's heard the question, you know, what problem are you solving? In practice, that's actually a little bit trickier than it looks. Um, yeah, great answers, Andrea. Impossible to share ideas effectively when we're not in the same way. Good, again, about collaboration and, and the friction, particularly in remote, right? So we could even say collaboration for remote teams. Second question, 
Now, describe your target audience. Let's describe Miro's target audience. Now, in Miro's case, there are multiple targets. It's, it's a mature product, right? It's not just targeting one very specific niche. So what I'd like you to do now is just write up maybe two or three personas that you think Miro might uh, target, right? Two or three personas that get lots of value from Miro. So again, I'll give you a minute, and put a little timer. One minute just to write out two or three personas, right? Who do you think uses Miro? Think about demographic data, like a role. What about psychographic? What kind of problems might people have? Okay, don't, don't worry about using the, the board yet. I'll, I'll use the board and then we're gonna get you to, you've uh, got your own section below where you're gonna be able to use this uh, shortly. So what are the two or three target audiences that may use Miro? Okay, whenever you're ready, feel free to post on the webinar chat. Good, some interesting ideas coming through already. Yeah, awesome, great. We're all, all on the same page. Uh, agile coaches, product managers, remote engineers. Let's just put a few. Sorry, I don't know. Somebody's uh, blocking the board. If you could just unselect that card for me, that'd be great. So let's put, what have we got? We've got a few interesting ones. Agile coaches. Software engineers, yeah, interesting. We could add that after. Good. I'm just going to override this person's card. Let's let's start with product managers because it's one that we can all relate to. I'm sure. Yeah, you can look at our teams more broadly. Designers, yeah, excellent. Anybody working in tech, right? Good. Okay, so we've got these different audiences, and 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 we need to actually understand that you know this problem collaboration to do better remote work like it's different for these different personas right it's, it's not that we you know we don't just build a product for everybody we, we have specific use cases so now what we want to do is drill into who these people are what the problem is for them and what the nature of that problem is and there are four key questions we're going to ask now so first one is about acuteness right is this a is this a really acute problem for them because if it is they just be more motivated to try and solve it, that makes our life easier, easier to acquire them, easier to get them to try the product, stick around and, and pay money for it. Secondly, we have addressability. So how addressable is your target audience? Like, can we actually find them? Like, do we have an existing acquisition channel? If not, do we at least know where they hang out, for example? Thirdly, one that was rarely asked, are you intrinsically motivated to solve this and help this person? You know, if your company sells cigarettes to kids in Indonesia, then, you know, you can have the best product ever, but you're probably not going to do a great job with that because you don't believe in the, the mission, right? You're not motivated to solve it as an extreme example, obviously. And finally, we want to look at market potential. You know, it is a mistake of many MBA programs, uh, many uh, traditional businesses where they'll really, you know, love getting a great spreadsheet, five-year financial planning, look at all the potential target audience, and they never really get started. But we do want to understand, well, what is the potential? What are the possible avenues we might go down in future that, that might be valuable there? So what I'd like to do now is let's look at that question three. How acute is the problem for Specifically, let's look at this first group, right? Product managers. So we just look at this first group, apply these questions just to product managers today. Oh, sorry. So what I'd like you to do now is we'll try and do these quite quick fire. So try and be on the ball. Um, how acute is that problem for your target audience? I'd like you just to post a number from zero to five. How acute do you think the problem of collaboration is for product managers? Zero would be they don't even care, they don't even know about it. Five is they're losing sleep over this. Please post your answer, zero to five, and just in one line, why you think it is, why you're giving it that score, okay? So for product managers specifically, how acute is this problem of collaboration? Again, please post on the webinar chat.
how acute is the problem of collaboration for product managers from zero to five? Please write down just the number and in one line why you think it is that school. Good, great. Just 10 seconds more to post your answers. Good, Kaylee, Callie or Kaylee, not sure. Um, good, so Kaylee's giving it a five. So I'm gonna say Callie, probably. Tell me if I got that right or wrong. Uh, five, so super acute. Why? Because yeah, they gotta collaborate across teams. They gotta motivate their teams. All right, it's the sort of core of your job, right, as a product manager. So I think five's a good score. Yeah, well justified. Anthony, interesting, 3.5. Of course, it's possible to collaborate using other tools, but perhaps asynchronously. Great answer. It's like, well, there are other ways to, there are existing alternatives, right? Different ways that we can solve this problem. It's just not, you know, it's not, it's not perfect, right? It's, it's a bit of a pain still. I would probably, you know, again, this is all a matter of opinion, really, and, and sort of experience. There's no right or wrong answer. Let's give it a four, let's give it a four out of five. I think it's a good score, maybe 4.5. Okay, so so pretty acute, right? So something that really affects their day to day, you know, and ultimately, you know, your 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 ability to have an impact as a product manager. Good. Second question: How addressable is your target audience? A little bit hard in the case of Miro, but how? Um, let's imagine that we are Miro uh, in the early days. We just launched our MVP, and um, how how do we think we might be able to do we or do we think we're going to be able to find this market for example so how addressable do you think finding these product managers are to then get them to come and test out our product and get more of them to come and come and use our product right, so imagine we're early miro uh, trying to find that, that that first market so again please write out a score from zero to five zero would be like it's absolutely impossible to find them Four, they are like unicorns five yeah easy we know where to find them they're queuing up at the door so write a score and maybe some sort of justification <laughs> nice and good answer already let's see what else we get Good, so please post your answer. Bit of a hypothetical one, so don't worry if you're not that sure about it. Good, let's uh, see if there's one more answer, then we'll move on. Yeah, I would say we got so Anthony, five, they're all over the internet. I think that's pretty valid, right? You know, we can find product managers on LinkedIn, um, they're on blogs. Right, it's a pretty sort of defined thing. There's there's meetups, groups, etc. All they are literally all over the internet. Uh, Andrea, three out of five because you can't really mass target them. You can spot them in communities and buy a search on. What note to? Yeah, I'd say probably a four. I think there are you know most uh, audiences are pretty hard to find. But yeah, you're right. Good, good, good logic. Yeah, let's see. I think a five. I'm going to give it a five based on working this market. Um, thirdly. How intrinsically motivated is your team to solve this? Now, in our case, this is a super hypothetical question, so it's not that helpful. But, you know, we really want to make sure that this is something we're passionate about. So let's say, you know, hypothetically, well, we, we're we all product people, right? So this is something that, you know, if I think of myself, like I like helping product people because it's a problem I can relate to. So we might say, you know, actually, that is a five. It's a high score, but it's, it's a five, what are we, maybe a four. Right, you know, five is like really we we're solving world hunger. Like we're doing some some amazing good. Um, although this is still a really important thing and something we're probably interested in as well. So you know, again, something that we might discuss as a team when we apply this right in the real world. Um, or you may do your own rating as a you know what's your sort of honest rating as a leader. Finally, let's look at market potential. So do we think that there's strong market potential? Uh, that could be within the vertical product managers. Like, can we really expand out to get more of them? Or in terms of other verticals, right? Other people that might want to collaborate, do we do we see potential there as well? Do we think we might be able to charge for the product, for example? So I'd like you to participate in this final and it reads through some, through some of the prompts here. Do you believe that there's strong market potential with this this group of product managers, or where that might lead us, right? By starting with product managers. 
So again, just a rating and just a one line sort of, you know, why you think that. Just one minute to just answer that last question. Good. Anyone else before we move on? Okay, excellent. Andrea wrote solid five. I would agree with you. Nearly any company can leverage Miro. Plus there's a trend of remote work. Plus there's a boom of, of, of digital product. Yeah, we're getting more teams coming online every single day that, that this is really applicable for. Um, Michael gave it a four because PMs will use this product with others, giving potential for the product. Expect, yes, we've got, we'll talk about this next. We'll talk about network effect. We've also got the fact that hey, PMs work with other PMs, right? They're gonna share with each other. They're gonna bring other PMs into Miro. So we get this really nice, uh, uh market protect this growth mechanism that has a lot of uh, potential as well and as you said it's uh, um i think andrea touched upon um any company can leverage it's, it's sort of applicable for any role so if we were to start just with product managers and exactly what miro have done we can expand that into other people that collaborate like designers engineers agile coaches for example so what have we got if we now go down to the final question right are we solving the right problem all we need to do here quite simply is add up that score. If I got my very basic maths right there. Miro's got a very high score, right? 18 out of 20. I deliberately chose it. This is a very successful product. It's a, a, a uh, um, you know, great example of, of choosing the right problem, really delving and thinking about that effectively. Now, when we apply this next, I'm sure we're gonna you know, get you to apply this with, with your own product. Do not expect a very high score. This is a real extreme example. So what do we do with this score? Well, there's no sort of objective right or wrong. The, the goal is if we get a very low score, then we need to say, well, actually, you know, are we solving the wrong problem? Like, are we, are we committing resources to something that's very sh a shaky foundation, something that's very hard to build upon? Or what we might do more realistic is we might come out with, say, a score for, you know, 12 out of 20 for agile coaches and 15 out of 20 for product managers. What does that tell us? It tells us, well, you know, maybe it makes sense to focus on, uh, the, you know, the group with the highest score uh, over the others or simply cut out certain groups where we think, you know, actually this just isn't a real big problem for them. It's not, not, a, not a good opportunity for us. It might help us refocus. So it's a way of just really kicking off that conversation about where should we, where should we focus and where might we adjust things to, to ensure that we've got a really strong foundation again, that we've got, we're making sure that there's real market need, uh, acute market need as a foundation to then go and build a product upon. Good. Any, any questions with this specific section before we get you to go and apply this your, yourselves? Just this first section on the problem. Any questions? Do feel free to, to, to speak out if so. Very much encouraged. If not, we'll also have Q&A at the end as well. Okay, great. If questions do come up, I will come back to them. Excellent. So what I'd like us to do uh, now um, is we're going to put this into practice. Put this into practice. Before we do that, I forgot to mention earlier, um, our, a book that I have been working on, a, a new book uh, called Product Strategy is Simple. Uh, this is a really nice short actionable guide to crafting uh, validating and actually communicating your product strategy effectively it comes from you know experience with 270 product managers 10 to 12 years uh, in the industry so it's just been published if you want to order a copy it is half price just for the next seven days you can see it up here from pointing the right direction so if you click this this yellow card you can you can grab a copy of that that's enough of the marketing for today though Let's put all this stuff into practice. So what I'd love you to do is grab a board. If you scroll down on Miro, I will repost the link just in case it has got lost in 
the uh, the chat just reposted that link what i'd love you to do is just write your name on the top left wherever you see a free space so you know say michael you just add your name here that's one there and if everybody do that then i'll explain the next uh, section kaylee no worries great thank you for joining do follow along with the replay uh, if you if you can make that so add your name on uh, if you scroll down you'll find these different sections add your name top left and then we will get started awesome michael the first board anthony over here i know many people will just be following along uh in the background this is great for you guys because you get a little bit more feedback than usual good if anyone joins late or is following along with the replay there are other boards available as well you can get started with so what i'd like you to do i'm going to set a um just seven minute time and see how we get on and what i'd like you to do is go through those seven uh questions okay so starting with you know what's the problem that your product solves and I'd like you to go through, uh, when it comes to the target audience, just focus on one specific target audience, go through those questions. If you finish thing, then add your second target audience, third, et cetera. Okay, so, so go vertically down and then move on to your next target audience. These, these are answers for the product you are currently working on. Okay, exactly as we just did in the example with Miro and be as honest as possible with, with your answers. Okay, so I'm going to set a seven minute timer and we've got some nice generic music from Mira. Let's do something calming, ending the day with this exercise. And questions. If you're a bit confused, if you want a bit of help, just write on the chat. You can message me directly and I will uh, come and help out as well.
Just uh, one minute to go. In fact, let's let's pause. I see we've got a few really nice examples already. Good. So we've got three three really nice examples uh, written up, which is great to see. Could I ask if anybody's willing, uh, Michael, Andrea, or Anthony, just just write in the chat if you're happy to come on stage and just go through this example. Don't need to turn your video on or anything. Just just audio so we can discuss your example. Okay, excellent, great. Anthony, I'm going to invite you onto stage. <laughs> As I say that, I've completely forgotten how to do it. There we are. Right, I think you need to accept something and then we'll get started. Awesome, how are we doing? Just uh, if you mind unmuting, then we will be able to hear you. Awesome. Good. How are we doing, Anthony? Doing well, thank you. I never expected this thing to do, so. Um, but I can answer any questions. Okay, great. Do you mind uh, just holding your, I don't know where your microphone is, just a bit closer. It's a little bit quiet. Um, so I have, I have some wireless headphones on. Um, is that better? Yeah, yeah, better. That's better. Great. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks for helping out as well. Good. So let's, let's go through your example. It's a very interesting one. It's a very interesting one to sort of demonstrate this. So, so firstly, just give us a bit of context, just in a, a sentence or two. What's the stage of this product? Is it well established? Is it mm -hmm. profitable, for example? Where it are you at with this? It is profitable. It's the um, it's already well. So it's a chat based therapy that's been delivered mm -hmm. uh, by the NHS. So it will be a real person at the end of a keyboard um, okay. communi communicating with somebody who's depressed or suffering from anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and they now they want to digitize that in, in, in a form of an app so you have okay. a, a therapist yeah like a therapist in your pocket got it okay nice okay awesome good so you've got a few different audiences here right you've got people with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. second people with ptsd third people with phobias mm -hmm. so let's just go through that first example so you've got people with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. you gave it an acuteness score 4.5 out of 5 pretty self-explanatory right you know people mm -hmm. suffering from depression anxiety this is a, a, a you know something they they lose more than sleep over mm -hmm. um second interesting so how addressable is the market you said 2.5 out of five so so pretty difficult to find them why why do you think that was the case for, for your product as it is right now mm. well i think that maybe uh i don't know i was speaking for myself like working with computers or digital or technology it can if, if you're looking for the antidote to that it'd be nature or um unplugging and relaxing so mm -hmm. you know without being prescribed uh this app careful or, careful there you're you're you're, you're yeah, i yeah. agree with you on that point but we're not talking about solution yet this okay. is you know foundation level we're going to talk about our next mm -hmm. um with with well, the second part, right? Where we talk about sort of differentiation with the actual product itself. Yeah. Just based on the the just asking that that question purely. So, how addressable is your target based on where you're at now? Right? Sounds mm -hmm. like you're developing this new app. How easy is it going to be to find that audience, those people with anxiety and depression? I suppose quite easy, and I think people will be like prescribed it by the the medical uh, by the sort of health healthcare. Yes, yeah, so you've got you've got this sort of pre-existing channel that you can draw upon. It sounds like also you've already got a solution running, right? So you can use whatever you, you're using now, but I don't know if that is a prescription or not. It's this this particular app is is uh targeting the American <laughs> health mm. market, so the wellness market and um yeah, so okay. the NHS obviously isn't as okay, profitable. So so for that specific new market, right? So you're looking at people in the US with anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. how addressable do you think they are in terms of like how you might find them? Is there an existing channel you can use? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how it works over there in terms of like, um, it's not like you could go, uh, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, gave it a low score because uh, as I said earlier, maybe these people, maybe they have to go and find it actually. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, so it sounds it sounds like it's gonna be a bit harder, right? Yeah, you know, if you were to target the same market you already have, then it's actually probably pretty easy because you've already got this existing, you know, existing funnel, right? In some way. In this new US market, you're gonna go, okay, well, like where the hell do we start with people that are the pocket? What do we find them, for example? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a three, so you could you know, there are there are groups, right? There are forums, etc. But can you can you get sort of ready regular access to them yeah i think probably quite low actually mm -hmm. good interesting how intrinsically motivated is your team to solve it? you gave it two out of five why why was that the case i'm speaking about the people i work or worked with uh in this instance so they were very um kind of uh, i don't know if it was the remote aspect but the very kind mm. of um, they're not altruistic people, they're very self-centered people, and it didn't feel to me like they cared about society's mental health as a whole. Mm. Um, and maybe that was because money and power kind of, I, I don't want to get too uh, yeah, off, do topic, I know, yeah. off topic, but yeah, yeah, me speaking personally about that t that particular team, uh, like well mental yeah really interesting because it you know it shows that stuff you know we go on paper like well obviously everyone's going to be really motivated to you know help people with anxiety and depression mm. not always mm. the case right uh, uh, not always mm. the case um actually and... actually that that's that that's you, you've just reminded me so because this would be a paid app they, they kind mm. of want people to be anxious because then if they're not they don't need your yeah, product keep paying so. for it, right? yeah yeah good it's so really interesting right it's like we have to go you know something may have been seemingly obvious if we haven't actually audited this stuff this this may be something we missed out and we go actually you know it's really hey like, you know we've got some great ideas if, if our team's not motivated to do this then mm -hmm. you know it's not going to work out if we lack that mm -hmm. one thing mm -hmm. ain't going to happen yeah good and final, final one you gave. Uh, so for market potential, you gave it a four out of five. Just, just in sort of mm -hmm. one sentence. Why, why was that the case? Uh, I think the, the pandemic has just raised people's mm -hmm. levels of anxiety, and yeah. uh, it's been a very turbulent time. Yeah, I think it's unfortunately a clear high score. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at trends around Gen Z, etc., increased levels of depression, etc. Yeah, yeah. So, so that there is market potential. And it's not, you know, we don't have to look at that and say like, oh, you know, this is great, like money making opportunity. It's more. Mm. This is this looks like a good direction for us to take. This is going to help us be sustainable over the long term. I, you know, build something that's actually used, hopefully achieves profitability, and then that helps us have continued impact. Right? It means we're not going to close the company. We're not going to stop providing value to the people that are suffering with anxiety and depression. So even in this kind of more altruistic use case, it's really important. We, we still look at it like a, as a business, right? We need to be able to sustain ourselves to, to keep helping people out ultimately. Mm -hmm. Good. And again, I want to choose this example because it was, it, you know, it's an interesting one the, the scores are actually surprising. I mean, I was surprised by those just as someone that doesn't work in this space and actually we get, you know, we get a relatively, relatively low score and what what hopefully this you know this does right when we use this in practice so let's take your case anthony is you know when, when you're pitched these ideas initially is being able to just take this you know imagine we take this this uh, uh product audit as these ideas are coming up about you know what this product might do who it might help it's going to help us really crystallize okay well are we starting with the right thing do we have that right foundation or should we actually look at something else it could be a different audience Mm -hmm. it could be looking at a different problem entirely as well so this could you know save us jumping in and 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 and, and potentially committing to the wrong problem mm -hmm. or, or as i said just adjusting maybe slightly in terms of audience in terms of the nature of the problem uh, for example good does that, does that make sense in terms of how we how we then you know how we would apply this so in your case i think early stage would be to really uh, you know see you know is this the right problem for us to commit to yeah it does uh, i guess the, the you know the different um audiences i kind of i felt that they were all the same so i think uh, those, those different like three swim lanes would really help as well in terms of evaluating yeah. mm. and there's we do quite a few different exercises in our, our put mba boot camp around drilling down on niches and really trying to find like who who is the person that this is most acute for 
-hmm. particularly relevant in this case, right? Where, you know, it's, it's a very big market, unfortunately, very big market, anxiety and depression, just alone that market, mm -hmm. people in the US with anxiety and depression. So it's a highly competitive one. So we really need to drill down on like, what is the actual problem going on? And how can we, you know, how, who, who can we try and serve specifically so that we can actually deliver unique value? And that's where we'd move on to then stage two and, and say, okay, right. So, you know, of this, with this group, what can we do that's really different, right? That provides sort of unique value for them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. That was, that was awesome. I'm just going to take you off the stage. Thank you so much, Anthony, for volunteering. Uh, I think we've got time for one more um, before we do a quick Q and A, and then and look at how we use the second part. Um, we won't do that today, obviously, but but just so you're you're aware of it. Uh, I don't know, Michael, Andrea, are you happy to jump on stage? If not, don't worry. Okay, excellent. Okay, great, Michael, I'll uh, invite you on stage. Just to double check that your mic is off. Perfect. Um, just say hello or something and uh, we'll see if your mic's working. Oh, I'm not sure. I can't, can't actually hear you. Okay, so don't worry too much. I'm just going to go through one of the examples um so we can we can wrap up with that and then I'll, I'll review again the second part of this framework so michael's written out what's the problem your no worries no worries Mike. i'll just go through it quickly what's the problem the product sells restaurants need more than one way for customers to place orders so here we've got two target groups we've got casual diners or casual dining sorry because it's the restaurant there's a casual dining restaurant and and pubs so Michael sees this as more acute for pubs, right? That, that they need one way to, to, for customers to place orders. Dressability is about the same. So three out of five and four out of five. Intrinsic motivation is a little bit higher for the restaurants uh, and market potential is these higher with pubs. So Michael, let's just use the chat for this. Based off going through this, this lightning product audit, which you know only took you five minutes, would only take 10 minutes to do with your teams, and stakeholders, how might this change or or just support, in fact, give you more confidence with the direction you may be currently taking, right? With these two two personas, has that changed anything? Do you think this is a, a, a way to help you sort of use this as a talking point to sort of kick off change, for example? Any any sort of thoughts when you look at these two scores or any surprises, I suppose? Great. So Michael just wrote, I believe it will definitely help stakeholders focus on what we're trying to achieve. Good. Yeah. So again, it's not about, um, yeah, instead of solutionizing, we're starting with the right, right foundation, trying to understand kind of like, who are we actually trying to help? Who are they? Right. So what's the problem? Who are they? And what's the nature of that problem for them? So, you know, the audit is not always about, particularly here, we're talking about existing quite established products. It's not about throwing out everything we've done in many cases. It's just about maybe refocusing or just, you know, really trying to, trying to um, slightly adjust what we've already done, right? In terms of the audiences, like who we actually think is really important. Maybe we're going to start focusing more on the pubs versus the casual diners. And that's really what we want to do with this audit. It's not about magically changing everything, you know, throwing the roadmap out, coming in with a whole new product strategy, it's just about, re-anchoring around okay well, what actually do, th do we think is important and as i said in the intro that can be for a you know product we we you know join a new company day one week one this we can come in and just do this order and see okay well what, what's really going on do we have the right foundations in place secondly it can be used to set, 
assessing any any idea that one of your mates comes up with finally very powerful for interviewing as well and just you know really trying to understand are we addressing these two key risks because if we don't have a strong foundation right in terms of the problem first are we solving the, the right problem a real acute problem and secondly are we actually then uh, solving that in a unique and valuable way then anything we do after that is not going to it's not going to work it's not going to deliver value right we could be a great pm we could be amazing at prioritization motivating our team the foundations aren't there that building's going to crumble so that's exactly why we use this audit and just to, to recap and cover the second part today we just went through part one right the problem are, are we how are we able to understand like okay what is this the right problem to solve and for whom second part we didn't have time to do today but i do encourage you to go through this if you're watching the replay if you've joined today live do go through this you can reach out to me on linkedin just linkedin.com slash henry latham um, uh, and just ask me for a little bit of feedback i will make sure i do that for every single person part two very briefly what do we do that we want to say okay right if we want now that we have an idea of what problem we're solving who we want to you know who we want to solve that for we then say, well, with the solutions we have or that we might be proposing right, with a new product, is that product uniquely valuable? So again, we're going to start with the target audience. Everything com comes back to these audiences that we're focusing on. Let's say it's product managers and it's, you know, it's Miro. We might say, okay, well, what is the unique value proposition for them? Because if we don't, we aren't able to articulate that in one sentence, then we're not going to be able to, we can't expect our teams to go and deliver features that help deliver on that unique value proposition. Below that, we've got, got then four questions to ask yourself, similar to what we did with the problem. What sort of ways of qualifying this and saying, okay, well, I, you know, is this actually unique? Are we actually offering something unique? Or if not, how could we offer something unique? First one is how do we question convention? So how do we look at a problem or a sol existing solution and say, well, you know, how might we do that differently? Example, you know, we've done that at Product MBA by saying, you know, we do not believe that overly theoretical courses and just reading books, although I pitch, pitched the book today, <laughs> we don't believe that's effective for helping you level up. So we're going to be extremely hands-on and deliver, you know, a, a course that's not just about videos, but getting you to actually build a real product and then level up your product career in the process, as an example. Right, so that's questioning convention. Secondly, companies might use new technology to differentiate. Easy example, Tesla using uh, uh, constantly improving uh, uh, batteries, for example. Maybe leveraging existing technology like Loom has done with faster uh, or better, better sorry, improvements with video recording and processing. Right, so maybe using new technology there. Thirdly, you might just focus on you know, some great product strategies are just about doing one thing really, really well. Superhuman email experience, the, the fastest email experience ever. They focus on speed. Uh, if it's Zappos, shoe company, uh, back in 2010 or so, they just focus on customer support. It's like, hey, we're going to sell shoes, sure, but we're going to make sure we've got the best customer support ever. And they ended up being bought up by Amazon and extremely successful uh, along their journey. And finally, network effects. Can we leverage things like you know, Miro, the example we covered today, to drive more traffic, to bring more people in and deliver more value with our products at each step of the journey? So again, we've got these four qualifying questions and we're going to come out with, with a sense of, you know, are we actually offering uh, something that's really differentiated? Again, that can be used for existing products, can be used for new products as well. And that's just a brief overview of, of part two of that framework. Not going to cover today too much to do in, in one hour uh, at the end of your work day so we're going to wrap up there with the content again hopefully today you've got a good sense of how we can very quickly go through you go through these two frameworks in a half an hour session and just get a sense of you know do are we addressing these two key risks and that ultimately is our job as, as, as product managers and product leaders we looked at that mirror example you know applied that really worked out uh, broke down the problem and Second, you had a chance to then go and apply this with your own product. If you're listening to Reply, I strongly encourage you to go through and just uh, uh, go through the exercises we did as well. If you joined today, great. Why not do this again? A product you worked on before, maybe an idea you've got for a product, for example, just to help you build uh, experience through repetition. So we're going to wrap up there. If anybody does have questions, uh, I will hang on for a couple of minutes. So do feel free to post questions. If you're watching the replay, again, just reach out to me with, with any questions you do have just Henry Latham, L-A-T-H-A-M on 
uh, LinkedIn. I will make sure I get back to everybody and I will review any, any work as well on the Miro board. So thank you for joining. And uh, as I said, I'll hang on for a couple of minutes for any questions if they arise. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you, Michael, Anthony and Andrea as well for, for participating uh, as well. I've got some really nice examples there and I hope you'll have a good evening wherever you are. Excellent. And obviously, <laughs> sorry, I've got one of these reverse cameras. Buy this book, which is now out. It is half price until uh, Wednesday next week. So I encourage you to do it. Very short, very actionable on product strategy. Thanks, Andrea, for joining. Glad it was insightful. Uh, yeah, waste of time if it's not. So that always gives me some encouragement. Great. We will wrap up there if there's no questions. Thanks for joining. If you watch the replay, thank you for taking the time as well to, to go through this. And uh, hopefully see you on the next uh, webinar in a month or so. Bye-bye.